Hi everyone. So that was uh, me playing around with some new tool I've been making in um, Python. We can see it right here. And what it's doing is it's um, I'm basically looking at a webcam feed, just my, nothing fancy, just a built-in webcam on my MacBook. And I've divided that in separate parts, the screen itself. Um, we'll take a look at it in a second. And uh, that way I'm able to control parameters inside Ableton. Some of those parameters are uh, via the Ableton API and other ones are just plain old MIDI messages. Now, I recently created a full course on how to interact with Ableton over MIDI. We can find it right here. It's called Learning Python with Ableton Live and it shows a lot of cool tricks on, on um, well, this kind of stuff basically. But I also wanted to throw something on my YouTube channel, so that's um, what I'm doing here. So because explaining Python is um, a little bit out of the scope of a regular YouTube tutorial, I will give you a basic overview of how things work. and. Um, yeah, and then I will upload the code as well. I will add some comments so that if you guys want to play around with that, you can. Um, I should say I, I've thrown this together in um, just an afternoon. It's not; it can definitely be improved. But um, my main goal is to see if if I can get you guys inspired to mess around with this stuff and learn coding in a fun way rather than sorting lists of fruits and apples and bananas and stuff like that. So first, what I did in Ableton is. Um, I have one source track here, which has, it looks like four, but it has only two devices, which are harmonizers. And I'm sending the MIDI of that track to two source tracks, which are um, so, or to, to two destinations. So we have the Plux destination here. I mean, I can just play this without any um, fancy Python stuff. <laughs> So these are just the same chords in A minor and you can hear them uh, both in the pads and you can hear them in the plucks. And um, what's happening is that these um, via the Ableton API, I'm able to switch these devices on and off. You could also MIDI learn that, but I want it to be a little bit fancier. That's what's happening um, in the code right here. These are device rec parameters. And the, um, this button here means that if I set this to one, it means it's gonna turn a device on. So then if I if I run this code and I look at the webcam, we can see that I have on the left side here, I have when I um, put my hand in this box right here, it will start the composition and it will do nothing other than that, um, I also noticed that if I if I do that, there's actually what's kind of a bug in the program that I kind of like. Um, if I put my hand in a box, it will keep re-triggering the the session start, so Ableton will keep um, keep launching the score, and it actually can sound kind of nice. <laughs> If I take my hand away again, it will it will stop playing. Then if I put my hand in this box right here, it will enable the first of those harmonizer devices. Let's see if we can take a look at that. Um, there, and then we need to be on the source track. Let's do it like this. So if I, my hand is here, it should enable this one. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably I should have said something up that if I, there are no hands that should automatically stop. That's easy to do. Um, but yeah, you can see that here nothing happens. It just keeps, um, it just starts playing and it keeps uh, uh, repeating the, like bashing the session button. Basically, it's like repeatedly clicking this button. Then here we get the first one, which happens to be an F major chord. So, so it's modulating those chords. And my goal was I wanted to have something a little bit expressive, something that I can play around with um, just with my hands and, and feel almost like a conductor or anything like that. So that's what I tried to do. And then since I had some screen real estate left, I um, divided uh, the right part in just two sections. The first one is for the melody. What this is doing is it's sending um, MIDI notes to 
a track with zebra on it and this is set to the minor a minor harmonic scale so if i put my hand in that box we will get notes um it's sort of a random duration random interval in between them um, and then there i have just a delay after that so if we listen to that <laughs> And then finally here at the top, I have modulation, which is now it's a gigantic field to only do one thing, um, which is uh, modulating this macro on the master here. So we can see that we should be able to see that move as well. Now, if you're wondering why this looks a little bit laggy, it's it's not laggy, but this box right here, it's sending notes, and um, I have a random wait time between a note on and a note off message, and the result of that is um, that it freezes the webcam frame. So it's actually not it's not a heavy program to run at all. It's just um, because it's waiting between note start, note on, and note off, basically, it will freeze. Now, this is something that's easily um, solvable by using multi-threading in your program itself so that we don't have to wait for a function um, but since I don't like I didn't want to overcomplicate this this is something that we go into in the course but for now I didn't want to overcomplicate things um, so we just accept that it's a little bit laggy looking now let's take a look at the code um, so yeah, like I said, I'm 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 not if you if you're completely new to coding, this is not something I can teach in one video. I do teach this in in the uh, in the full course. But basically, what's what's happening the the, the structure is um, we have this package called Media Pipe, and this package can recognize the hand positions. Actually, it can recognize the positions of all of your fingers. Um, what I will do for now is I will mute the master. Um, so that we can um, just look at that without hearing the sound. So, so media pipe is in charge of tracking the finger positions. And right now, what I've been doing is I've, I'm only tracking the pink position. But you can use all this. You can use all these dots basically, and you can get the X and Y position of them, and you can get the depth, which is how far they are away. Now I'm only tracking one finger, and I'm only using the X and the Y position. So this is something that can you can massively extend to to be um, much more. Uh, precise still. Um, so that's that's what this package is for, and then basically what we um, what we do is uh, based on the x and y coordinates we're doing stuff. So if we scroll down here a little bit, this is. Um, it starts with a webcam feed, and a webcam feed is just like a flipbook, right? It's just they're all pictures. So this media pipe thing that tracks the hand position, it it um, it can actually only look at pictures, but since frames are just pictures, it will look at a picture and we'll see if there's a hand in the picture and then we'll start to recognize the fingers. It's a, it's a machine learning AI library. It can also, you can also track um, your hair. I believe you can track your iris, like your, your eyes. Um, it's, it's really quite cool. Um, so we're doing that and then I'm um, saying, okay, so if the if the pink position is less than halfway um, over the screen, so that means it's going to be on the left side somewhere. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Um, so if it's if it's somewhere on the left side of the screen and it's in this range of um, seven eight seven ten ten fifty ten fifty being the border, that means it's going to be in this box. And then I say call this fun I call the enable device function with the parameter tonic. Now, if we go to that function, we can see that it, this is where it will send a message to start playing in Ableton. Um, and then it will also set the devices. It will make sure that the devices are both off. So um, the, all these parameters there, there for the device, basically the device parameters itself. So um, 
here, for example, the first one is the, the track which it's on, which uh, it happens to be on track zero, then the device index, so this is the first device, this is the second device, and then this would be the on-off button. If I set this to one, it will enable that device as, as soon as I put my hand in that box right there. Um, and then we have all the values here that make up the rest of the device. Now, you might notice that I've set up these harmonizers to, um, to specific settings inside Ableton, um, but you can do that through here as well. So you can see here that these are actually, these values right here, that's, those are that diagonal, um, is that diagonal? Yeah, line. So you can see this is the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and then we're transposing that. And if you look at this here, you can see one, two, three, and then four is skipped, and then we go to five, making them both on the same row, like so. So this is, um, you, you can modulate all these device parameters. Um, uh, yeah, you, you have full control over all of that. Um, so that's basically what it works, and that's, and that's almost this, yeah, that's pretty much the same for all these boxes on the left side. It will just switch on or off devices, either one of them, either uh, two of them or, or none at all. And then we have this live song start playing method to start playing when I have my hand in that box. It, you can see that um, Ableton says, hey, start playing. And you can see that it does that very fast. Um, so we have that, and then the right side of the screen, we have at the bottom half the melody. So what I'm doing there is, so if the if the if my pink is not below half of the screen, it means that it will be on the other side. Um, and then we have um, we simply send MIDI notes based on the height of my hand. Um, and if we go to that function, we can see that I'm, um, I'm so I'm, as soon as that happens, I'm, as soon as my hand is in this box, or my pink specifically, it will call this function. Um, um, it will say, okay, MIDI out dot send message. So MIDI out is another package. It's just, it's not from Ableton. It's just a, um, a package to send MIDI, either CC or node data. Um, and I'm saying, all right, send the node on. And then I'll say, after the note on, wait for in between, this shouldn't be zero, this should be in between 0 0.1, for example, and 0 0.6 seconds. So you can make a note that's maximum 0 0.6. It will just choose a random number in between that. Um, and then it will send the note. And then, um, or actually it has sent the note already, but after that waiting time, it will send the note off. So because of that, we can get notes of random durations. Let's, let's try that with some sound maybe. Uh, let's play here. And that is also going through a, yeah, so to this minor harmonic scale, so that the notes will be more or less in the same uh, scale, and then it has this has this reverse delay on there as well. Um, and then finally, for the modulation at the top, we divide this range, um, and then we convert those values. Um, that's happening right here. So it says, all right, if the um, if the pink is in that area in between 1.0 would be the top of the screen and 0 0.5 would be the center line then convert it from a range from 2 to 127 that could also of course be 0 to 127 that's just our midi range right so we can see some conversions here where um where the the for the note we see that this, this as well like the x and y coordinates of the pink as as reported by the library that we're using is always between a range of one and minus one so we convert that to um yeah a sensible range to use in this case for the notes between 60 and 92. Um, so yeah, hopefully that that gives you a little bit of an uh, of something cool to try in um, 
in Ableton. One thing I should note, um, note is that this, um, all these API calls, they're happening through a, um, a script which is called Ableton OSC. And this script I have loaded in my um, control surface. So what this does is it basically creates a URL. You can use a URL style pattern to do certain things. And this is actually a very fancy thing to do. If you want to use that, you have to look for Ableton OSC, reject everything, um, uh, go with this package, Ableton OSC. And it, it, if you're completely new to scripting, it, it um, might look a little bit intimidating, but really it has like nice instructions on how to install it. And then here you can see those, um, those addresses that you sent. So you sent that to a port that Ableton is listening to. That's also why we, why Ableton says stuff, right? So Ableton is reporting stuff here um, as to what's happening if, if I do stuff here. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to show for today. Um, if there's interest in this kind of stuff, I know it's kind of geeky. I will, um, I will try to um, make maybe a video in more detail. But like I said, this is also explained in my full video course, which you can get through the link in the description. Um, I will upload this, upload this code to GitHub. I put the link there as well. Um, and probably I will tweak it a little bit because there's some things in there that are um, not as sexy as they could be. Um, I now see that I have a mattress on the background. It's not because I'm poor, but I just moved. Well, actually, I'm poor and I just moved. So that's why I sleep in my studio. Hey. Um, all right. Thanks for watching and uh, see you another time. Mm -hmm.